Travnik has found a good home at Jumbo Visma as well, despite that uh, early accident uh, at the start of the Giro. It certainly looks good now. And he will, be, will form an integral part of the squad, an important part of the team for that versatility that he has. And relative freshness as well, just coming off several training camps at altitude, having not run. So, yeah, this is a solid move. And the longer this goes on, and the fact they're completely and utterly committed here as well, um, their chances right now are good. Because we're not looking at a super big mountaintop finish. It's, it's just basically a long drag to the line. The last part of the climb is categorised. 2.1 Ks at 5.4%. But it is, the climb does go on a lot longer than that. It's, it's just a long drag all the way through to the line, isn't it? From, um, from about 140 k's to the line. It's about a 15 k drag. But it's the last kick up to the line that's actually categorised. Well, Jan Lascan will be hoping to be in the Vuelta squad if he can. Big selection for Movistar, certainly in that Spanish national champions jersey. The man from Vitoria, capital of the Basque country. He's only ridden two Grand Tours in his career. He didn't finish that. Last one he took on in the Vuelta a couple of years ago. Got round the Giro d'Italia last year, just about. And has not ridden a Grand Tour this year. Remember, it was in the Classics. He excelled earlier on this season. Uh, and overlaid with that would be the weather condition and the wind condition. So this constant stream of information will be uh, fed to the riders uh, in relation to making sure they keep themselves in the right position. And of course, in most of the head units, they'll have the map on there as well. But yet, yeah, constantly being fed information. Um, not to say that anybody might take it up today, but you just never know. All it needs is, um, is for somebody to be a little bit disruptive, especially when we head into the last 30 Ks of today's stage. Could be very, very quick on the approach to the final climb. His Limres is still riding at the front. You ride is starting to move up with a few nerves. Nobody wants to be out of place. It's been a few minutes since we've seen those. My, uh, very limited Spanish as we look at, uh, well, that seat speaks for itself, doesn't it? Some really nasty abrasions, lacerations, road rash for Jay Vine on his left elbow and on the, the left-hand side of his uh, shin as well and part of his knee. I think it as well, some of that salt might be partly due to the weeping you can see because you can see that in the upper side of his jersey, although it's white. And on the, the bandages as well. I wonder if that's con interested in control and nothing else today. Yep. And they've got a team. We, we've, we've talked long about the, their team, but they've got a team that's very used to doing what they're doing. They are in total control. Um, there's been no stressful moments. And obviously, there's these couple of little changes of direction which. Um, could be problematic but for the reasons that i've talked about any teams that would have the capacity the firepower the resource the desire to split it are already represented it are all happy everybody save i think for agent who are um are happy with the situation at the moment the breakaway has um, a nice spread of teams who don't need to do anything behind and everybody's more than happy i think to uh to look to yumbo visma to control things so um a classic holding pattern has fallen over this stage and the big question now is which one of these riders should the gap stay thankfully all was okay and we're up to 45 k an hour now yes the terrain has changed i know that we're on a sort of a flat stroke false flat downhill now the yeah, pace is up this, yeah we're just on this mini plateau aren't we we go along here and uh, the way they've been riding i think they certainly have maybe well, they'll be certainly holding something back, and they will be able to respond to this bit of pace. Make it all this oh, no, 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 no. I wonder if this was a result of what we saw a minute ago. There was a bit of panic, wasn't there, with the rider from Azure Desert and the way that Bauman was coming back. Let's have a look. Something's Bauman's the... just at the front yeah. there on his way back, and there's a couple of riders here for Azure Desert involved. Rider from Cajarural is the man who stayed down. 76 there from Azure Desert's Andrea Vendrame, who is continuing. It was a and I'm afraid this Hanuman. is... Yeah. Not good news for Rider from Cajarural. No. 58 k's an hour. If you just let's just listen to that, it's lovely to be connected to the sound of a race, isn't it, Rob? When we're, when we're commentating, and, and from time to time, you might lose the sound momentarily. Suddenly, you feel 
enormously removed, don't you, from the race. But to hear the sound of the, the helicopter, the road noise, the chatter of the riders, uh, the sound of, of changing gears, but the, the sound for me that makes me feel like I'm almost there and connected enough to do, to do what we do is just the sound of the rubber on the tarmac just whooshing along. It's that subconscious connected nature of hearing that audio. I just love it. Adam Yates out the back here on his way back to the peloton and on the radio got a couple of his riders dropping towards the back of the peloton to help out short stage today um, 157 k's uh, they've been out in front all day um, they're going to feel that little bit of fatigue as you normally would for the, the very nature of, um, of road cycling but also I think they're just going to be making sure they're doing enough but also enough to hold something back once this kicks off. But uh, given the nature of the roads here, this group are going to stay together for a lot longer, um, well into, I think, the final sort of five or six Ks. Um, because if they don't, if they start attacking each other, that's when they'll lose all the momentum. And it's so much harder riding as an individual into a headwind like this. So um, and the gaps come down again, two minutes and 16 seconds. But right now, everybody now is riding right on that, um, that tipping point of holding a bit back but making sure they're investing enough to still give themselves a little now, bit of hope. Only about that 20 yourself. seconds, Rob. Good look how low the Spanish champions get in there, tucking himself in, making himself as uh, small as possible to punch that little hole in the air. The beads of sweat dripping off him. I'm, having said that, I'm just looking at the back of his neck. He's just no kilometer at 7%. So that's the stage where any pure climbers are going to need it but again if you're not talking double digits it's going to need to be one heck of an acceleration to really break those behind you're going to need that explosive um although the gaps are continuing to drop this this group's still moving pretty well together they'll be getting that constant instruction from the ds behind making sure they're still and uh, making sure they're drinking still got probably the best part of 15 or 15 minutes of uh of racing here as well as Jay Vine just drifts onto the wheel of Brambila. Um, illogical, um, but uh, the sport is um, is quite illogical sometimes, but also very logical. Uh, but it's, but it, it's just it's just an interest, the fact you can't be seen is quite important. <laughs> it's sort of a natural human instinct thing without yeah. wanting to go too deep, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah, totally. it's all sort of being chased down, I guess, back in the day when there were uh, hunter gatherers and things like that. <laughs> One minute 50 as we head to Villagalijo. Movistar make their presence felt in the front, trying to protect Tena Rubio. Through the centre, Kern Farmer have ridden a great race this week. Mixed it with the big boys, even in the team time trial. They've got presence up here in the breakaway with Raul Garcia Pierna. Now, is everybody riding? I'm not sure. Good enough. Is it steep enough for him? Does he have the experience? Remember, not one since his amateur days when he won a stage in the Val d'Aosta. This is fine at the front. Injured since yesterday, but riding well. Loves racing in Spain as a two-time Vuelta España stage winner. Won the Tour down under at the start of a year after taking the national jersey in the time trial. The riders must follow, and they must follow at pace. Nine riders in. Will the win. And that went up for grabs on stage four of the World Double Burgos. It's 2.1 kilometers, 5.4% average, the second kilometer the hardest, 7% to the line from that one kilometer to go banner. There so go. Jay Vine, Oyer Lascano, <laughs> who peels off the back, Santiago Buitrago, Matteo Fabro, Jonathan Caicedo, Harold Lopez, Raul Garcia Pierna, Juan Bao, and Gianluca Brambilla. And they look, they watch, they wait. Yep, that was uh, another little uh, turn missed just a few moments ago, forcing Garcia in that uh, green of Kern Farmer to do an extra double turn. As Cano has made sure he's latched onto the back of this group so he can see everybody. 1,300 Jumbo. meters to go. Jumbo Ooh. was just moving up with a little bit more enthusiasm there and then looked behind and thought against it. Now then, he has made a move. He's strung this out a little bit more. Brambilla, he's Ooh, on the other side, go. thinks about it, fires and goes. Yeah, Gianluca Brambilla, and from the back, you can see that Buitrago wants to respond. This is brilliant stuff. What happened there? It was, this, the gap just opened up. Brambilla didn't attack first. He opened up that gap, 
Um, and then he's accelerated off the top of it, but it is indeed Boutrago trying to drag him back into contention as we see the pace really picking up from the bunch behind. A fierce fight at almost 60 kilometers through that town. Prado Luengo as he almost goes long. Up towards the final kilometer already here, and this is where it goes uphill. Once more, they look around. Garcia Pierna thinks about going round and will go round. Yep. Former Took Spanish time trial champion off the front, and he has that momentum, as you say, going through the Flam Rouge now. One kilometer to go from here. Caicedo looks to close this. Garcia Pierna looks behind, thinks about it, and chooses to wait. Caicedo thinks again as well, ups the pace. Everybody's still together. Bao might be the first to lose contact here after he made that early move. Brambilla trying to get into the mix again, but there's so much hesitation and mistrust here. Yep, the longer this goes on, the more it's going to suit the riders who can just sprint out of this group. If it's only three, four hundred metres to go, it's not about climbing, it's just about the ability to sustain high power for just 10 or 15, 20 seconds here. So, uh, meanwhile, behind it is Attila Valter leading the group. They were at 103, no chance of them catching up here, but just making sure that they keep things together to look after Roglic. Vine putting in the pace as we're coming up to just over half a kilometre to go. The next move, the second move from Bao. He had a tentative approach at the start, and John Bao, who's never ever won a bike race, came through the development squad that belonged to Alberto Contador. He's here at Euskaltel Euskadi. He's gone through that 500 metres to go. He had a gap. I don't think it's going to be a big enough one because all your last count of the Spanish national champion is chasing him down. But they've got to zigzag their way still up to the finish here, Matt. They certainly have. Lescano was the man to respond. Jay Vine dropped from the front right to the back of that group. As you can see, one, two, three, uh, and a final turn up to the line. The pace has accelerated here as they head into the last couple of hundred metres. A couple of gaps starting to open up now, Rob. And it's Lascano who's still at the front, just behind him in the red. You can see that Buitrago's there. Vine is off the back, and he's going to need to move up because the gaps open up. Right now, Garcia Pierna is fighting to stay there and fighting to get back in. Lopez is also there. Bao's the only man really out of it. And they're five minutes short of four hours as we take the final turn. It's Oya Lascano, the Spanish national champion. Santiago Buitrago, who's there but can't do it with him. It's going to be victory for the Spanish champion at the Vuelta Burgos. And Oyer Lascano takes a wonderful win on the road. The main man from Movistar brings it home from the breakaway. And that last corner being key. Yeah, as well as hard drop, that was actually quite technical. I mean, it was really quite a technical finale. It looked strange. It, it looked like, oh, when are the riders going to move up? But they were clearly...